Hello, I'm Mr Burton and in this video we're going to be looking at consumer and producer surplus. What they mean and how we can show them on a diagram. Okay, so consumer surplus first off. This is the difference between the price in the market and the price that consumers are willing to pay. So the best way to look at this is actually to draw it on a diagram. So the first thing we need is a downward sloping demand curve like so. We know the uh, demand curve is downward sloping um, from our previous video. So at the price of let's say P1, we have a quantity of Q1. So now we need to look at then, well, what were some consumers actually willing to pay in this market? Well, we know from our theory that the demand curve, the market demand curve, is made up of lots of individual demand curves. So therefore, we know that there are some consumers willing to pay a price of P2. There are other consumers willing to pay a price of P3. There weren't many consumers willing to pay that price, but there were some consumers. So if the market price is set at P1, then what we can say is that if consumer surplus is the difference between the price in the market and the price that consumers are willing to pay, we can therefore say that anything above the price level in the market is consumer surplus. There are some consumers that are gaining a surplus from this price. Uh, surplus literally means extra, um, so some uh, consumers are willing to pay P2 and P3, but if the price is P1, these consumers are actually getting more out of the good than other consumers. Um, so the surplus in the market, we can say, is a triangle in this case. So that triangle there, the purple triangle, is consumer surplus. There, we can look at individual consumer surplus. Uh, any consumer that was only willing to actually pay um, this price would have no consumer surplus whatsoever. Um, we can look at the price of P2. Let's say we have a price of P2. Any consumer willing to pay more than P2 is getting the surplus above the price of P2. Any, if the price was P3, then we would have a consumer surplus triangle uh, of this triangle here. But the main thing to take away from consumer surplus is if we have a market price of P1, then anything above that price level is actually a consumer surplus in the market. Okay, so next let's have a look at producer surplus. Well, for that, we need to have an upward sloping supply curve first. Let's say that the price is the same. Let's just take the price from that market. Let's have the same price here, uh, just to make things a little bit more uh, coherent. So let's say the price is P1 again. Producer surplus is the difference between the price in the market and the price that uh, producers were willing to uh, sell their product at. So we know then, similar to this, that there are some producers that are willing to charge a price of P2. There are other producers willing to charge a price of P3. So there are some producers in the market that are willing to charge a price a lot less than the market price. So they therefore gain a surplus from the market. They're gaining more than actually they either want or even need. So at the market price of P1, the producers are gaining a surplus of this triangle here. So we can draw that like so, and we can say that is equal to the producer surplus. Now let's have a look at that um, in more detail. Let's say the price drops to P2 for the uh, producer. So we are now at this market price. Well, therefore, there are still some uh, producers willing to charge a cheaper price, but now the producer surplus has uh, fallen here. Okay, the producer surplus has actually fallen um, if the price, the market price drops to P2. 
So what if the price drops even further to P3? Well then producer surplus is also going to drop further uh, and get smaller and smaller. So what we can gain from that, well if the price goes up, producer surplus is going to get bigger. If the price goes down, the market price goes down, producer surplus is going to start shrinking. Um, and the same in the consumer surplus uh, diagram. If the price gets higher, we can see that consumer surplus is actually shrinking as the price goes up. Similarly, let's take this example. If the price uh, in the market has dropped, the price is now here. Well, let's go to the demand curve um, and down to the quantity level here. So now the consumer surplus has um, got bigger. There are some consumers that are willing to pay more than the new price here of P that we've taken from the other market. So we can go to the demand curve and now we have a huge consumer surplus triangle. Okay, so I um, used a lot of different examples there with the prices, but all we need to take away is that at any given price level, anything um, above that price level, we can shade in the triangle and say that's consumer surplus because there are some consumers that are willing and able to pay more than actually they are. Um, and at any given price level again, if we look at just producers, we can say that actually there are some producers, that, if the price is a P1, that are willing and able to charge a cheaper price. So they are actually gaining some surplus, which we can just um, shade in the triangle as well. So we can show them individually here, consumer and producer surplus. Up next, I'm just going to put them together and we're going to have a look at um, the producer and consumer surplus on the same graph as well. Okay, so now what I want to show you is the consumer and producer surplus if we put supply and demand together. We've created a market here, we've got downward sloping demand, upward sloping supply. Hopefully from already watching most of the video, um, you can start to see where maybe it's going to be. Um, but the market price is P1 and the quantity is Q1. We've said that anything above the price uh, is going to be consumer surplus, and anything below the price is going to be producer surplus. So we can show on this one that there's some consumers willing and able to pay more. So we can shade this in here, the triangle above the price level and to the demand curve is the consumer surplus. So let's label this uh, P1, a and B. So P1, A and B, the triangle here is a consumer surplus. Okay, uh, then we know as well from the video that um, anything below the price, there are some producers willing to charge a cheaper price. Um, so we have here the cons uh, producer surplus here. So let's label that P1, B and C down there on the bottom. So P1, uh, B and C, so that triangle there is the producer surplus. In your exams, uh, I would uh, label um, these up like so, just to really show the examiner that you know exactly what you're talking about. Um, and then any mistakes with saying the above triangle or below triangle are taken out completely. So shade in the triangle, uh, particularly if you don't have different colours. You can label um, A, B and C and you can um, show using the letters as well what the triangles are for consumer surplus and what they are for producer surplus. So that is consumer and producer surplus. Um, you can show it on the two different diagrams or you can show it on one diagram. Um, I'm going to do a very quick video uh, to follow this up um, with a bit of extension work on consumer and producer surplus. So if you want to uh, watch that, please click on the next video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe below and comment for any other topics you want me to cover in my next videos.